Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes once again. A couple days ago, I put out the video saying that I was coming back to the game, and overwhelmingly, I've had a lot of people happy to see me back, a lot of people welcoming me back, and very happy to see me once again covering Galaxy of Heroes. But at the same time, I also got a lot of questions about the lightsaber that I used in the video. If you guys do want to get one for yourself, there will be a link to it down on M down below in the video description. I got it through Amazon. You can get it for about $120 plus shipping and taxes and then if you want to get crazy enough you can attach a second one and then you can get a double blade lightsaber be like Darth Maul up to you guys but that link is down below in case you guys were wondering about the lightsaber but today we are here to talk about the Galactic Legends and what to do for them how to prepare for them and my thoughts on the requirements so far what I think you should prioritize for those characters. There's a lot to break down with Galactic Legends so far, and we've only been given the first set of requirements for each of the new Galactic Legends, Rey and Kylo Ren, and we do know that they will be coming sometime in March, so probably towards the end of March, considering that they didn't release any new requirements this week, we'll see what happens. But Galactic Legends, for the most part, look like they're going to be part of some new meta within the game. They are going to be very, very powerful characters. They are going to require pretty much some incredibly powerful requirements on them as well, as you guys have seen with the first level, with Kylo Ren and, and Jedi's training Rey both needing Relic 7, and some other First Order Resistance characters needing Relic 5. So it's going to be a bit of a grind for these characters, and by the way they are hyping up these Galactic Legends, it looks like they're going to be worth the time and effort put into unlocking them. The big thing here, of course, is the ultimate ability, similar to a capital ship. So we know they're going to have something that makes them really just wipe out the enemy team or really boost your team in some way and that they are also going to be boosting the relics on your team as well so they're going to increase the effectiveness of relics which we don't really know exactly how that's going to work yet maybe it's based off a of percentage or a flat value we don't know yet but we do know that they are also going to be plug and play characters so they say here for example ray could lead to could all give you a strong resistance squad but she also works well with just about any light side squad as well and we can obviously assume the same is going to be working with the new galactic legend for kylo ren where he is going to be able to work great with a first order team but then you can plug him into any good dark side team and still make him very effective so no matter which galactic legend character you're going for first you're going to get a great return with them as a plug and play character but also what we will probably see is something with a meta for resistance and first order at the same time, probably going back and forth, we'll see how things go. I highly expect that Darth Revan and General Skywalker 501st squads are going to be knocked down a peg with this because I highly doubt they're not that they're going to release these Galactic Legends and not have them become part of a new meta. It just wouldn't really work out and also kind of hurt the investment or players' motivation to work on the Legends at the same time. So we know that. And we've been given the first set of requirements here, and we see that Rey is going to require the Jedi Train Rey at Relic 7, Finn and Resistance Trooper at Relic 5, while the Kylo Ren version requires Unmasked Ren at Relic 7, and Stormtrooper and Officer at Relic 5. So, pretty, uh, pretty hefty requirements so far, but one thing that really should be pointed out here is that the minimum requirements for each character will vary, and not all characters will require Relics for this event which is great because if I have to put relics and a Zeta on Rose, I'm not going to be very pleased with that. Uh, I know a lot of people do not, do not, are not really looking forward to putting relics and gearing up Rose. I'm sure that they're going to require some kind of gear 12 or 13 on Rose. Hopefully they don't put a lot of relics on her either. We'll see how that works out. But also, we don't really know if certain characters are going to require Zetas. I'm sure there's going to be fleet requirements as well. There was a leak from Kelvis Pan Han this morning talking about a leak that was posted on Discord that obviously it's just a leak and could be pure speculation. We don't know. But it's supposed to require some seven star ships for Jedi or for Galactic Legend Ray, which we don't know. Could be possible, but probably not. I take that leak with a huge grain of salt. We'll see. We'll see in the future if that leak is correct or not. I don't think that it's gonna be. It's gonna be crazy to not expect fleet ships for 
for the Rey and Kylo Ren requirements here. If you go and look at the ships that we currently have in the game, you can see that we actually have a pretty significant amount of First Order ships already. We have four of them, and we also have a decent amount of Resistance ships. We have Rey's Millennium Falcon, Poe Dameron's X-Wing, and Resistance X-Wing. So it's not crazy to think that ships will be acquired here. After all, we did see ships become a requirement for the epic confrontation with General Skywalker. So I don't think it's crazy to think that ships are going to become a part of the requirement for Legends, Rey, and Kylo Ren. So with all that being said, what does this mean for you and which one should you prioritize for yourself? If Unless you're a oh, Kraken or a Big Whale, you're probably not going to be able to get both Galactic Legends characters right away. So then the question becomes, which one's more worth your time? And honestly, I think the answer here falls down to which team already is the most powerful. And if you're looking for the team that's most powerful, I think the obvious answer here is going to be Resistance. With the introduction of Resistance heroes Finn and Poe, as Arnold definitely demonstrated in one of his videos, Resistance are a very powerful team right now. They can take out most teams now. They can't take out General Skywalker in the 501st. They can take out Padme. They can take out Darth Revan. They're competitive against a lot of teams out there, and that's with the Jedi training Ray leadership, and that's with the new heroes. Of course, obviously, they're Gear 13. They undoubtedly have some Relic power on them and some Zetas, but... As a whole, your Resistance team is very competitive now with the introduction of those two new characters from Episode 9. So Resistance on the whole, on the whole is definitely the most powerful squad of the two right now. So you're probably going to get better, you're probably going to get a bigger benefit from gearing up Resistance because you already have a guarantee that they're a very powerful squad and that they can really compete already against the meta. So I would undoubtedly say that if you're going to focus on one or the other, definitely go for resistance because that's the one that you know is going to be much easier to become competitive. Though, of course, we don't know what exactly with First Order. And this does come back to First Order with their issues with General Hux. We had the nerf with General Hux where his unique was preventing term meter gain against 501st. They had to nerf that. So now General Hux is basically constrained to being used on a First Order team. And even then with that and the introduction of Sith Trooper, the new Sith Trooper for First Order, who's also Sith. Honestly, First Order seems like the bit weaker of a faction right now because they don't have the power to really go against those top end teams like your Jedi Train Ray and Resistance led teams can. They rely on critical hits and honestly against some teams out there like Darth Revan and Padme, you don't you're getting you have a really big disadvantage with those critical hits. You have the guaranteed fear against uh, against Darth Malak, and you also have the immunity to critical hits with protection up with Padme, but also resistance has ways of gain around that. So that's kind of the big issue, that's kind of the big separation between the two, is that they both rely on critical hits, but the resistance team has ways of gain around that reliance on critical hits and being able to still do damage and still be able to survive against those Darth Revan and those Padme teams. So First Order is good at, I guess, wiping out Geonosian teams with the Sith Trooper and General Hux. Though General Hux and Sith Trooper are still very strong characters introduced to First Order, there's no denying that your First Order teams are still going to be very powerful. So honestly, if you're going to be farming one or the other, again, I recommend you go for Resistance, though I don't think you're going to be necessarily behind the curve if you go for first order either i have no doubt that the galactic legend kylo ren is going to bring something to first order that's going to make it very powerful within the meta we'll see what he brings but if you have to go for one or the other obviously the best bet for you is going for resistance so once you know which galactic legend you're going to go for my recommendation is to start hoarding hoarding is always a good idea with resource management games like galaxy of heroes but also, I have no doubt that the Galactic Legends are going to have Zeta abilities, and I would not be surprised if the ultimate ability requires more Zetas than what we're used to with some of these abilities. So start hoarding those Zetas, make sure you have plenty to go for, but also start working on hoarding up your Relic ability, your Relic materials as well. Go ahead and start hoarding them, and then as the requirements come out, go ahead and spend them on whichever character you're looking to use them for. If you're going for Galactic Hero Ray, obviously start focusing on your resistance characters and as the requirements come out go ahead and start upgrading them to the required levels and also 
be sure that you know put some mods on them because I have no doubt that some of these characters you're probably going to want to use with the new Galactic Legend right anyways so use those use that horning to your advantage making sure that you're going to be ready in time for each new requirement now of course they've also said that these are not timed events so once these Galactic Legends come out in the game there's no time requirement or time window that you have to get them in a certain within an event they are going to be available for whenever you reach those requirements so this doesn't have to be a panic farm either and that is another nice thing kudos to cg for that and also for the pretty good advanced notes that they gave people on this i mean a relic 7 jedi train rain that's a pretty hefty deal already and i mean we could talk about the whole we could make a whole video about the requirements they've given so far and how that's going to really hurt a lot of people but at least they gave people a good month advance notice that they need a relic 7 jedi train ray or kylo ren unmasked so that's plenty of time for you to start working on them you don't have to panic at least for now you don't have to panic we'll see how crazy some of these requirements get but for now if you just spend your cantina energy use some crystals for cantina energy refreshes you're going to be able to get plenty of relic materials in time so i don't necessarily think that you're gonna have to freak out and get them but again we'll have to see what they do in the future with these and they could very well make it so that all these characters are going to have some pretty steep requirements but the caveat that we're not going to have to put relics on all the characters required for these Galactic legends is very welcome news as well so we will see what the requirements are i'm hoping we get some new requirements released this week we'll see what happens there but that is going to be it for this video guys let me know down below which character are you guys focusing on are you guys even farming for the galactic legends right now let me know down below as always guys thank you for so much for watching feel free to like share and subscribe i will see you guys next time